Hello, and welcome to my ISU Research Days presentation. I'm Ben Van Dusen. I'm an assistant professor in the College of Human Sciences within the School of Education. Today, I'm going to be talking about equity in introductory physics, chemistry, and biology courses. The importance of this topic is that women, black, indigenous, and people of color are heavily underrepresented in many STEM disciplines. This is largely due to forms of systemic racism, sexism, classism, and other forms of oppression. And this is leading to everyone losing out. Not only are these students losing out on the opportunity to improve their lives and communities through science, but science is losing out on their diverse perspectives as well. Uh, the empirical evidence for the impacts of racism and sexism on our courses can be useful for instructors when they're thinking about their curricular decisions, researchers in how they formulate the research agendas, and policymakers as they decide how to allocate scarce resources. The data in this study um, comes from introductory science courses for majors at the university level. Um, and we'll look at concept inventory data. So these are assessments that are usually given during the first week of class as a pretest and the last week of class as a post-test. And students never find out how they do. They're just diagnostics to help the faculty member or instructor know what students do at the beginning of the course and what they do at the end of the course. And you can see here we have data across physics, chemistry, and biology, totaling around 17,000 students from 265 different courses at 33 institutions. I want to begin by looking at inequities in physics student outcomes. In this figure, the y-axis represents the percentage correct. The x-axis shows our different um, racial groups. And we'll see we represent women in green and orange in men, pre-test with dots, and post-test with triangles. So let's begin by looking at our Asian students. Um, what we see here is that there are clear inequities in the pre-test scores for our Asian men and women. Um, we see evidence of systemic racism depressing Asian women's performance on the pretest. So they come in with these differences in their content knowledge, and they leave the course with similar differences in their content knowledge. So we see, uh, while, while the gap might be a little smaller, we see that our introductory physics courses have largely perpetuated these inequities. When we look across our different racial groups, we see a very similar trend for each group um, in terms of the impacts of sexism that um, women are being um, less well served than their male peers, both prior to coming to their introductory physics courses, as well as in their introductory physics courses, those differences are maintained. Uh, we also notice differences across our racial groups. The impacts of racism can particularly be seen for our black, Hispanic, and white Hispanic students, but it should be noticed that our white men outperform every other group. Those are the ones being uh, most preferentially served in our courses. When we look across disciplines, we see very similar trends in chemistry and biology. I know there's a lot of data here, so we won't go into the details, um, but we do see these impacts of racism and sexism span the discipline. They're not uh, just in physics or chemistry or biology. Um, and our university science courses continue to perpetuate them across all these disciplines. There are some bright spots, however. For example, if we look at uh, biology pretest scores, the inequities here are much smaller than our other disciplines. So something's going on. Uh, to prepare our students for introductory biology, likely a lot of that takes place in their K-12 education, that's leading them to be more similarly prepared than we see in the other disciplines. So this would be an area of future research to see how can we scale uh, and replicate these successes um, than uh, in other disciplines. Thank you for listening to my talk today. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me.